No way. My gosh, that is, oh, that's awesome. So I recently upgraded my Onefinity CNC from the original model to the Elite series, which includes a lot of great features. And today, I'm gonna to discuss the good and the bad about that decision, including one feature that I absolutely love and a couple of complaints that I still have about this machine. Now, I have no affiliation with Onefinity, so this is not a commercial forum. This is just simply my experience with this machine, but more specifically, the upgraded model. So to begin with, I purchased this Onefinity Woodworker, which has a cutting area of 32 by 32 inches, right at two years ago. Now last year I upgraded from the Makita Palm Router that Onefinity recommends to this Pwn CNC spindle and variable frequency drive, which I'll talk more about in just a few minutes. So let's go ahead and dig in with the upgrade. Now the most obvious upgrade for the Onefinity Elite is the Masso controller, and I love this improvement. In my first Onefinity review, which I posted almost two years ago, and I'll link it in the description below, I noted that one of the major weaknesses of a Onefinity was the fact that it had a crappy LED monitor with an equally crappy plastic mount. Well, fret no more. The Elite has such a better quality Masso controller, which is a 15 inch touchscreen controller and if you're like me, a 50 year old with bad eyesight, the controller is a game changer. It's also got a much beefier mount which could be removed very easily. Heck, I could spend an hour just talking about all the features of the Masso controller, but I'm gonna spend some time talking about the key features that I get the most use out of. First, check this out. Boot up is almost instantaneous. Now my absolute favorite feature about the Masso controller is the visual representation of your G-code. When we load up a project, you can actually see your project. So if you have numerous projects on a flash drive, like I do, you can actually see them as you load them to make sure that the correct file is loaded. Also, while your CNC is cutting, you can see the exact path during the process. I love this feature because it gives me reassurance that I've not only got the right project selected, it also helps me to see problems before they arise during a cut. There's also a dry run feature which will give you a single path of your project without actually performing a cut so you can see exactly where your project would actually be cutting. Next, it also has a step versus continuous jogging mode which I absolutely love. Step mode simply moves once per pass, so basically it's like semi-automatic. One press equals one move. Continuous mode moves as long as you hold the button, and the coolest part of continuous mode is the speed variability. You can speed it up or slow it down with the touch of a button. The XYZ probe is actually located right here, and it is much more user-friendly. You can now actually probe from any side that you like and you can easily manually set your zero points here. And one of the more annoying aspects of the previous series was that if you accidentally jogged your CNC axis too far to the left or to the right, and it got to the zero point, it would keep on trying to go. So you get this horribly obnoxious grinding sound as the motor kept trying to move to the left or right or whatever direction. You wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? Well, with the Elite upgrade, the X, Y, and Z stops include infrared sensors, similar to a garage door opener. When this tab interrupts that sensor, the CNC automatically stops. Not a game changer, but a definite improvement. Next, it's got integrated on-off controls for both your router and your vacuum, which means that as soon as you start a project, if you have it connected, when you hit go, it will automatically turn on your router and turn on your vacuum. When the project's done, it'll turn both of those off. Now, with my spindle, I use a variable frequency drive, so I really don't use that exact feature, but it's handy to know that it's there. Next, let's talk about the new feature that I absolutely love more than anything else, and that is the closed loop stepper motors. A closed loop motor is a stepper motor that uses a feedback mechanism to ensure that its position is accurate. With an open loop motor, there's no continuous communication back to the computer. So if the motor happens to get jostled or skip in any way, 
it doesn't know it. With a closed loop motor, there's continuous communication going on from the computer to all of the motors, so it knows exactly where it is on an X, Y, and Z axis. If the motor happens to lose a step or becomes misaligned at some point, the CNC doesn't know it and it can actually ruin your job. I've had that happen a couple of times. Now, while I'm not totally sure why it happened, the most likely culprit was the fact that there was maybe some static discharge on my uh, dust collection, which caused an interruption in the electrical system. But you have a much lower chance of that happening with a closed loop system. Also, if you do happen to lose power, it's much easier to power back up and pick up where you left off. Hey, and if you haven't done so already, if you got some use out of this video and like this type of content, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Now, let's talk about the negatives. And despite the fact that I don't wanna sound like I'm doing a commercial for Onefinity, there really aren't that many negatives. But if I'm gonna do a thorough review, I'll point out a couple of things that could be better. While the startup of the Masso controller is almost instantaneous, it takes forever to home the machine. Now I'm actually speeding up this video quite a bit right here, but I want you to know that it actually took over two minutes for it to home. Now this really isn't that big of a deal because with a little foresight, you can solve that problem. All that you have to do is before you shut your machine down, make sure that you go ahead and move it uh, using the continuous stepper all the way back up to the uh, front left corner. That way when you turn it on and it homes, it doesn't take any time at all to complete that task. Now next, um, this isn't so much of a complaint as it is a reminder. A Onefinity does not come with a spindle or a router, so you do have to purchase that on your own. Now Onefinity recommends the Makita Palm Router, uh, but I upgraded back last year to a Pwn CNC spindle and variable frequency drive, and I absolutely love it. One thing to know though, is that Onefinity does not provide any kind of technical support for a spindle or probably even that Makita router since they didn't manufacture it. Next, and what's probably the only real complaint that I have is a slight issue with the Z slider. As I just said, I've upgraded to this 80 millimeter Pwn CNC spindle with a variable, fre with a variable frequency drive, and I absolutely love it. The VFD automates the controls of your spindle, including starting and stopping and speed. So as soon as you start your cut, the spindle turns on, uh, goes to your required speed, then automatically shuts off when the job's done. If you're on the lookout for a good spindle system, I recommend that you check them out. Uh, I love their products and their customer support is incredible. But the problem that I run into is that when you shut down your CNC, the Z slider often drops due to the weight of the spindle. I get it, it's heavy. And with no power holding the slider in place, gravity is gonna do what gravity is gonna do, but it's still a little bit of an inconvenience. Now, if I'm overlooking something or if there is a solution to it, please let me know down in the comments because I don't wanna give inaccurate information. All right, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave a comment down below, maybe throw me a like. But the big thing that I want you to do next is check out this video where I discuss the actual differences between a spindle and a palm router for use on your CNC.